don't forget about where you come from. It's very, very important in your life where you come from. My family is like a really low level. My family don't have anything back home. India, despite its size and population, isn't exactly a country which promotes sports at all or anything beyond a career for young people that's going to lead them directly to to some financial success. If you are a sports person, you are usually taking a risk, and so that risk is usually discouraged. Basketball, honestly, is perfectly suited for India. We have this burgeoning substantial middle class interested in entertainment, interested in American culture. India loves action. They love heroes. They love the song and the dance. They love entertainment. And so the NBA is the, is the perfect sport for India. When you have a market like India, a market that will likely pass China in size in the near future, a market roughly 1.3 billion people, the potential impact is even beyond description. You can't go wrong with a billion people. Because it's a developing country and it's really starting to just now come into its own financially, there is a huge untapped market for us. It really takes only one player from a particular country to, in essence, turn that switch. Yao Ming, the easiest example in China. When he came into the NBA, that seemingly changed everything. You can go back to Arvita Sabonis, Drazen Petrovic. There, there are a lot of early guys who made their way in. And then Dirk, you know, from Germany, I mean, coming in in 1998. Every time a player reaches any level of success in the NBA, back home, the country goes nuts. This is the sport of the 21st century. It's a game that can be played inside, outside, by boys, by girls, by one person, by a few people, in cities, in villages, rich countries, poor countries. It doesn't require a lot of space like the way that cricket does. Cricket is uh, popular in India because they have icons. But uh, when we talk in the basketball field, that the players are popular, but just only in basketball field, not outside basketball field. Our best players are, are semi-professionals, so they work half the time and then they play half the time. Basketball, unfortunately, hasn't been a source of financial success in India, ever. To parents in India, one of the most important things for them is the child's education. So after the child is out of school, they go to after school school and they continue to study into the evening and so it's very difficult to implement sports and to grow sports because the parents don't allow the children to play. There are very few kids who will look at basketball as a way out. Now there's some kids who, who don't have the means to a decent education and for them basketball is the only way out. My dad, her life, her career, is only this farm. Mm -hmm. 
ਮਤਲਬ ਫਰਜ਼ ਕਰੋ ਮੈਂ 2-3 ਸਾਲ ਕਾ ਸੀ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਡੀ ਮਾਈ ਗੁਜ਼ਰ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਬਾਪ ਨੇ ਪਾਲੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਮਤਲਬ ਘਰੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਬਾਪ ਕੋ ਠਾ ਲਿਆ ਠਾ ਕੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਮਤਲਬ ਕੰਮ ਮੇ ਲਾ ਲਿਆ ਔਰ ਖੇਤੀਬਾੜੀ ਮੇ ਤੇ ਔਰ ਕਰਖਾਨੇ ਮੇ ਤੇ ਔਰ ਘਰੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰੋ ਤੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਪੜਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਅਭੀ ਜਦ ਮੈਂ ਜਦ ਛੋਟਾ ਥਾ ਜਦ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਡੈਡ ਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਇਸੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਜਹਾਂ ਪੇ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਬੈਠਾ ਹੂੰ ਜਹੀਂ ਪੇ ਮੈਂ ਪੜਾਉਂ ਖੇਲਾਉਂ ਔਰ ਜਦ ਵੀ ਡੈਡ ਜਹਾਂ ਪੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨੇ ਆਤੇ ਜੇ ਇਨੀ ਕੇ ਪੀਸੀ ਪੀਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਜਹਾਂ ਪੇ ਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਮਾਈ ਡੈਡ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਹਿਸ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਡੈਡ ਹਾਈ ਡੂ 73 ਐਂਡ ਮਾਈ ਡੈਡ ਹੋਲ ਹਿਮ ਬੀ ਹਮ ਮਾਈ ਸਨ ਇਸ 9 ਇਅਰਸ ਓਲਡ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ 59 and he said your son's really tall i've heard tall kids play well in basketball te ik mere mere dimag de vich hai ni si le vi satnam ik basketball da player ban sakda oh ik mera dost si rajinder singh jehda sada matlab prema hai ga matlab bhra hai te dost hai mera usne mainu bolya oh kehnda satnam nu apan ik basketball di game de vich pauna hai ik vadhiya player banunga he agge vaste apan nu bahut is to roshni milni hai ਸਤਨਾਮ ਤੋਂ ਮਤਲਬ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਉਸਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੱਥ ਵਟਾਏਗਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਾਏਗਾ ਤੇ ਪਰ ਮਤਲਬ ਸਾਡਾ ਇਹ ਸੀਲ ਵੀ ਤੂੰ ਇਕੱਲੀ ਬੋਸਕਟ ਵੇਲੀ ਖੇਡਣੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਕਰਨੀ ਆ ਸਾਡਾ ਤਾਂ ਇਹੀ ਮਤਲਬ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਵਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਵੀ ਤੂੰ ਇਹੀ ਲਾਈਨ ਫੜੀ ਰੱਖੀ ਤੇ ਆਪਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਗੇਮ ਹੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਅੱਛਾ ਹੀ ਬਣੇਗਾ ਇਹ ਗਾਹ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਵਨ ਔਨ ਵਨ ਟੂ ਔਨ ਟੂ ਥ੍ਰੀ ਔਨ ਥ੍ਰੀ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਬੈਸਟ ਮੈਥਡ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਹਾਊ ਟੂ ਕਟ how to shoot how to drive we give a advertisement in the newspaper we are going to open a basketball academy we need only tall boy those who are 6 plus so his father read in the newspaper he bring him here then as for the boy but for the great future for him from the day one i realized he was a man like god sent him specially to us start basketball i don't know how can i hold the ball i don't know anything he was a 10 year old who didn't know what basketball was i remember him telling me the first time he went out to play basketball this whole time he thought it was volleyball he did not know what game even he was playing at maine basketball start aaj se satnam singh ke sath aur tab meri height 5 4 thi aur satnam singh ki height 6 6 thi तो जब ये यहां पर आया तो हमें लगा कि सतना ग्रेट खली का एक छोटा भाई आ गया इट वाज अ रॉ मटेरियल एंड आई आर रिक्वेस्टेड डॉक्टर सुब्रमण्यम हु वाज अ ग्रेट थिंकर ऑफ बास्केटबॉल टू सी द पोटेंशियल ऑफ द बॉय ही टोल्ड मी ही कैन बी अ फ्यूचर प्लेयर बट इट विल टेक लॉन्ग टाइम फर्स्ट मंथ आई एम रियली क्राइंग वी आर डोंट लाइक टू ऑन अवे फ्रॉम माय फैमिली आई एम नेवर स्टे लाइक दैट माय फैमिली से सरना इट्स वेरी गुड फॉर यू please go stay here and go play basketball satnam's case is really the rarest of the rare it's already difficult to find an indian kid from a from a big city which has schools that take part in organized basketball tournaments and then which have colleges that take part in similar tournaments biggie had none of that and he was never going to have it if he wasn't discovered basketball did not exist in that world Troy he was someone who had a passion for the game and was determined to help spread that passion and I think he saw a unique opportunity there to sort of be the arms and legs of the league over in India when I moved to India in February of 2010 the first question I asked was where are the most talented players and uh, they said you need to go to this basketball academy in uh, Ludhiana and when I stepped off the train onto the platform at the train station the first boy that was standing there was Satnam the head coach came and sat by me and I said you know this tall boy that I met here the first one that was in line you know how old is he and he said you know he's uh he's 14 and I said no I said he's not 14 tell me his tell me his real age you know he said no he's he's 14 I said well then I'm really excited <laughs> Guru Nanak Stadium 
is the stadium in Ludiana where the Ludiana Basketball Academy is. It has a wooden court and it's indoor, which is rare to find. But there's also a lot of issues. The roof structure has a lot of holes in it, so therefore birds come in, so the court is never clean. We have this indoor court, but it is not heater. The heater is not there, AC is not here. In the summer, it's unbearably hot. In the winters in Ludhiana, it's very cold. So these things make it very difficult to grow a sport. Look, there aren't many markets left in the world where you can have that kind of impact, and especially a market the size of India. And I think just for Troy, it was just a labor of love. We are very behind in the basketball. First year, I don't have slippers, shoes. At that time, his shoe size was 18. No available in our country. No shoe available for him. I was sitting at this practice session and I was watching Satnam run three-man weave. His shoe was two shoes that were cut apart and sewn together by a cobbler. We're in disrepair and so he couldn't even run properly. I remember getting a phone call in 2010 and Troy Justice said, could you source some size 19 basketball sneakers that you could send back to India? When I gave him those shoes, uh, it was a really special moment. IMG signed an agreement with the Basketball Federation of India. Part of that agreement was to provide eight scholarships for four boys and four girls aged 14 or under. We went into uh, New Delhi for the tryout and I believe New Delhi only had three air-conditioned inside wooden floors, so we got pushed to a private school kind of unexpectedly at the last moment and had these kids in about 110 degree on court heat temperature going through a series of drills and scrimmages and you know different things over the course of two days. When the IMG coaches came they said are there any players that you would recommend and I said well there's one that I know that you will take first. <laughs> when you see a project like that here in the US you just start drooling and you want to find out more and you want to find out the details of how he got here and you know you know is this real kid really going to be 14 years old and we have the potential to bring him back and put him into our system satnam was six six ish six seven so he was projected to be a you know seven one seven two probably somewhere in that range even when satnam was 14 a lot of us had this feeling that if it's going to be anyone from india who makes the nba this could be it you know when i first saw him i thought you know this is this is the kind of player that has the potential to be great because he's been born with a gift. We haven't even had an Indian who's played NCAA D1 basketball, so thinking NBA is a huge step forward. But with Satnam, there was this feeling like he could be the guy. I said, Mom, I select for America. My mom said, that's good news, but my mom is a little bit sad. I said, Mom, don't worry, I do, I do something great, and India is proud for me. It's amazing what those kids did, that all of those kids left, to the, went to the other side of the world, left their families to pursue an opportunity um, at that age. As a youngster, to all of a sudden be traveling the world, and at the end of the year, you're living by yourself, learning a new language, in a new country. I can't imagine what was going through his mind. For the first uh, six months, I really miss my family. I don't know when I go back home. My daddy said to me, son, don't worry about your family. Just do your job. It's very, very important. You do your job great, maybe after five years, for 10 years, you stay with me. I say, okay, Dad, I do this. 
emotionally being away from home, you could just see the change. And for Sotnam, it was probably twofold because his language barrier was a little bit deeper. When Satnam first arrived on campus, he had little to no English language skills whatsoever. How do you communicate what your feelings are when you have trouble with the words just to have daily conversation? He's a kid, even though he's seven feet one, you know, over 280 pounds, he walked around those first couple months with his head down. In his first year, they, they focused a lot on, on getting his body ready to play basketball. He did a lot of weight training, and I remember him telling me that the majority of his work was in the weight room. Punch, punch right there, punch. There we go. And he thought he was here to play ball and he wasn't on the court as much as he thought he would be. So that stress release that would have happened didn't happen for him. When he walked into the weight room, I was kind of like, okay, this is a guy I can work with. But then when you looked at his muscles, you could kind of see the youth in the muscles. Anytime you have feet that are as big as his and you've grown as fast as he's grown, you know, between ages 12 and 16, every kid that walks in here that's experienced that has gone through the same biomechanical adjustment. I was like, we got a developmental project here. We got a long road. White feet, white feet. He grew fast, muscles stretched, bones stretched the muscle, everything wasn't necessarily coordinated. And then you top that off with you're the 6'10 kid out there missing layups and people make fun of you and people laugh. So not only was he a little bit alienated from the campus, but even his immediate basketball peer group was kind of separating themselves from him. When I first met Satnam, I couldn't understand him and he couldn't understand me. So communication is difficult. I think it frustrates someone when you're not communicating well where they don't understand you. I think that was a challenge for the coaches because, again, even the most basic commands, he, he didn't have that because he had very limited formal education in India. My coach is the, you understand, say, sorry, coach. That's my only one word, sorry. Satnam is a very disciplined person. He could have went back home and said, this is enough. I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. But he doesn't. He keeps fighting. He keeps pushing forward. He's very persevering. And whatever it took, he was going to get it done. I do that. Um, yeah. Do it. That's, that's just do you. it. We I don't am. even make excuses. We yes. do it, just like your coach says. Yeah. Despite the barrier, you never really saw frustration from him. You never really saw anger that he didn't understand. It was always kind of a willingness to learn. There you go. Right, the points, what I'm looking for. Okay. He's always had the right attitude, and I think that's what's made the difference. And so X is going to equal negative three, yeah. right? Yeah. Got it? Okay. Good. One day, I was just watching game, and uh, my coach came on me. He said, you understand what I say? I said, yes. And my coach said, Sonny, you learn a lot. You're understanding a lot of things now. I said, yes, coach. Three years, I can't speak English, and now I can't speak English, I just go talk. I don't need anything more than that. <laughs> just go talk. <laughs> How many followers does he have on Instagram? He's famous. He's he's famous. 5,000 plus. 5,000 plus on my Facebook. What was your first impression of uh, Satna? I thought he was going to be a mean dude. <laughs> And when I got to know him, I found out that he was actually nice. He was always so serious. Really? Yeah, till you, till you got to know him. 
and he started, you know, being goofy and stuff. Then you will see, like, <laughs> he's actually the nice guy. <laughs> you know, he also taught me a few little things in India, <laughs> like, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, nah, like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. That means smile, you know. <laughs> so I like to learn a little something different about different types of cultures. So it's my boy. Huh? What have you guys taught? Sadhana? English. I taught Sadhana a few things. <laughs> Girls, <laughs> like girls in America. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, we have a lot. Of, you know, we have fun. Son of you're a serious dude. Sure. Yeah, I, in the game, we are always serious. When game, in the practice, anywhere, but outside, just fun. Go ahead, dance, Sanam. How you doing? <laughs> oh, so you guys gonna give him a dance lesson? Come hey. on, Sanam. Hey, I've never done it. Let's see how much you've learned since he's been over here. <laughs> Come on, Sano. <laughs> <laughs>
जो कम से कम मेरे को आठ आठ नौ नौ साल हो गए मैं कम से कम मिला नहीं है पर वो सब भी आज मेरे को मिले हैं और काफ़ी लोग भी ऐसे हैं जो पीपल है उनको कभी को मिला नहीं है काफ़ी टाइम से वो भी आज ही मैं मिला हूँ काफ़ी टाइम से कम से कम चार पाँच साल के बाद मिला हूँ This is my house, the old house. So this is where you grew up here? Yeah, and I stayed here for a long time, almost only. Um, I think is uh, my new house for the 98, 99. सतनाम को खेलते हुए नहीं देखा एक्चुअली बल लेकिन जब भी वो रिहर्सल करता था घर घर पे खेलता था तो मतलब देखते थे उसको अक्सर तो हमने कभी सोचा नहीं था कि ये इतनी मतलब ऊपर तक जाएगा और हम रियली बहुत प्राउड फील करते हैं हाँ बिल्कुल हमें लगता है कि अब हमारे गांव से एक बच्चा निकल कर फॉरन कंट्री में चला गया है और हम सबको भी यही मोटिवेशन मिल रही है कि हम भी ऐसा कर सकते हैं अगर हमारे साथ ही खेला हमारे साथ ही पढ़ा एक लड़का हमारे गांव से उठकर इतना आगे जा सकता है तो हम भी जा सकते हैं ये सामने इस तरह लगता है जी मतलब जेड़ा उन्नीस साल के है मतलब ये बच्चे दी मतलब ताकत है जेड़ी ना इसने अच्छी बना ली है सामने इस करके लगता है लेकिन ये नवीन जब चीज आऊँगा मतलब मतलब लोगों को मतलब वैसे इतना सीना भी इधर का बच्चा है जरा मतलब अच्छा है समझदार है इस करके मतलब ये बच्चा लाइक है हाँ सात नाम बढ़िया गेम करता है मतलब सानू ऐनी तो कर मैं तो निश्चित पर मातमा नहीं देना मेरे को बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत खुशी भी हुई है फिर मेरे को सब के साथ मिल जाओ मेरे को इतना प्यार दिया उन्होंने मैं चाहता हूँ इनके लिए मैं कुछ अच्छा करूँ जो अपने विलेज का अपना नाम बनाऊँ और अच्छा करूँ गौरव प्रसादी एको भूजा जी एको समाई समाई वाहिनी का Hi, Sir Tom. How are you doing? I'm very happy to see you Thank after a long you. time. And people are waiting for you. Yes, sir. So I hope definitely you will make them happy. Thank you, sir. I will so be welcome, happy too. Huh? Thank welcome. You so Thank you so much. Everybody in Punjab, in Ludhiana Academy, and even Indian Bar, they are expecting so much from you. Everybody in India is waiting for you. Yeah. I hope you will satisfy them, you will make them happy. I hope. God will bless you. Thank you, sir. I hope. Thank you so much. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. You sure? I'm ready. Oh sure. You ready? Yeah. All right. Now what do you have to do? Just play hard. Yeah. Just walk you hard, you bound, finish strong, up down. Hard and uh, smart. smart. I got you. All right. Thank you. All right. See Please. you. This is our showcase and we'll have coaches from every division of the NCAA in here watching different levels and different talent. We're looking at college coaches from the SEC, Big Ten, ACC, uh, Pac-12, in and out throughout the weekend. The better he plays, the better you know, scholarship opportunity he's going to have. He knows that he has to showcase himself, show the ability as a big man to be a force, showing his agility, ability to get up and down the floor. So he knows what he has to do to really impress the college coaches in attendance today. We don't know anything about the opponent, but that doesn't matter. We don't care about the other opponent. 
we're playing against the game of basketball, right? We're playing against ourselves. We know what we want to do. We have to execute what we want to execute, how we want to execute it, and when we're going to execute it, okay? This is our tournament. This is our house. Nobody comes into your house and beats you, right? Yes, sir. It's nobody. Yes, All right? You guys ready? Yes, Let's go have some fun. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Don't walk down here. Jog down here. Jog down here. Let's go. All right, big game. You gotta, I want you to get wide. I want you to play low and wide like you did the other day, okay? Be intense. Be low and wide. And then when you pivot, note those short pivots. I want those big. You know how a door swings? Door, the door doesn't come small. It stays the same. Just swing. All right, love you. Go get him, big guy. Let's go. Go. One, two, three. One. His strength is his strength. You know, he's a low post player who, you know, likes to turn over his left shoulder to use his right hand. Nice pass, Scott Nam. Great passer, sees the floor extremely well, a very unselfish player, has an uncanny knack to shoot threes and can make them. Shoot it. Getting him going in transition is difficult, but once he gets going, that locomotive is gone. He doesn't have a mentality where he wants to go and, you know, chop your throat, but he is starting to understand that you can't push me first. You can get in him, you can yell at him, you can coach him hard, as they say, and he'll respond to you. Get rid of the ball! They're doubling, someone's open! Sub! Sub! Shoot What are you doing out there? You're playing soft again! Man, yeah, you're too bad! Turn it to score on You're playing down to their level. You make them come up to your level this time. Do you understand? Yes, coach. Shit, go back in here and get his ass. Let's go. Come on, big boy. I think, you know, he's got to work on a, a couple more things to get to that level. Uh, the consistency of playing hard, that, that high motor every day, every game. The question about big men is about their hand. Does he have good hands? Can he run? How agile is he? particularly someone over seven feet tall. Do they have a shooting touch? And Satnam has all of that. With Satnam, Arizona asked, Kentucky asked earlier in the year, Maryland, everybody wants to see his, you know, his transcript. Every coach that's been in the gym this year has asked me <laughs> yeah, about every single one. We've had everybody from Big Ten schools, you know, from Kentucky to Florida to, you know, Michigan State to Purdue, they're inquiring, but again, he, he has a long way to go before college is a real possibility. He's basically behind in his English core classes, you know, and, and being behind and taking those classes puts him against the wall for improving his ACT and SAT. Obviously, everybody's looking for bigs, so people are going to continue to ask about him, and we just need to continue to toe the line until we hear back from the NCAA with where his ESL classes stand. If they determine some of those count, then the kid's going to have a chance. If not, I don't even think that, to be honest, that JUCO is going to be an option. The NCAA has different ways that they interpret it, and they also have different waivers that players and international players are allowed to use. Sometimes you could sit out for a year. Sometimes, you know, they'll let you take a summer class to maybe make something up. Sometimes your TOEFL score, which is an English kind of proficiency test, can be high enough. But Sotnam was missing too many of the check boxes to get one of those waivers. So we're going to have to start, you know, looking at different overseas opportunities or maybe the D League uh, for him to continue to develop. The perfect ending would be for us to be able to hand him off to somebody with the same mentality as us. So that when he gets to 23, 24, 25, he's healthy enough, he knows the game enough, his body is functioning at an all-time optimal level, you know, so that he could potentially compete with the best in the world. You know, by April 1, we kind of have to move one direction or the other.
I was down at IMG actually to get some of my other clients, uh, Cameron Payne and uh, a couple of other guys, set up for them to come in for the pre-draft. And I was sitting with Dan Bartow, and I just asked Dan, I was like, what are you guys doing with the big kid from India? We explored all the options for him. Turn pro, potentially go to Europe with a good developmental club, or go to a good junior college. That really was never an option, in my opinion. He's going from IMG Academy, one of the most elite prep schools in probably the world as far as sports. And you go to a junior college, it's like going to a third world country. We decided he should turn pro because that was by far the best option for his development. Big fella. <laughs> big side though. What's up, big fella? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Just to see his transformation, I was like, wow, you know, and I know IMG, if he spent as much time as he did there, that his body would be really in tune. You know, I could see, you know, a little change in his foot speed and the, and the drills that they were doing in the weight room was really impressed. What does he weigh right now? He was under 285 late last week. Really? So that's down 10 pounds in two weeks. He looks good. All the movement stuff and the extra training has been really helpful. He almost broke my hand when he shook my <laughs> hand. We got his upper body super strong in all facets. Got his shoulders stronger, got his pressing stronger in all different planes, got his upper back stronger. He is ready to keep developing towards the pros. He's got a good touch for his hands to be so big. I mean, he's shooting that left hand eight, nine feet. That's it's a hard shot, man. That was really the first time I saw him in an individual workout. And the thing that stood out to me was how soft his hands were and how he had a very, very good jump shot. I like the way he's attacking his workout, too. He's not just going through the motions. He's working hard. I'm surprised he can actually shoot free throws with some touch, because his hands remind me of Shaq's hands. I mean, the kid hit nine threes this year. <laughs> he hit nine threes? He hit nine threes this year in different games, so. And not novelty, you know. I mean, we actually had a couple plays that went to him. He looks good, man. He's running really well. His body looks great. Uh, you know, I just watched him work out on the court. Sodenham looks like a basketball player. He runs up and down the floor like one. He, can actually play. I eat, live, and breathe basketball. And I told him, you know, hey, I evaluated this kid. I think this kid's really got a shot, you know. He's not an NBA player right now, but I think at his age, his potential, I think he'll have a chance, you know, and it could be something special. You know, from what I saw, he is a definite NBA prospect. Um, his size, the way he moves, you know, his body, I can see already a difference in his body from six months ago. And Sottenham has the character and work ethic that a lot of those kids that ended up, you know, getting drafted and getting on the rosters never even came close to having. Right. From our standpoint, we definitely want to work with them. Through the grapevine, you hear, you know, there's some agencies uh, in China, there's some agencies in Europe that were definitely interested in a couple here. I just came in and recruited them. I felt the same way that I would any other person uh, that I've done over the past 10 years. I've been watching you for three or four years now and uh, been following your progress. And our company is very excited uh, as far as being, having the opportunity to try to recruit you to become a part of our company. We reached out to all the agencies that we were had worked with in the past, uh, and out of all of the American-based agencies, Travis showed the most interest in Sottenham because he had seen him, you know, develop over time and really, really liked just Sottenham's personality. And I think that was important to Sottenham because of his culture and his nature. I started in this business uh, 15 years ago, really coaching. I was coaching Amari Stoudemire, okay? He lived with me for a few years, and I helped him get on the right path as far as with his schooling, and he decided to turn pro straight out of high school, similar to you. I'm gonna be not just an agent to you, but more like a friend or a big brother too, okay? 
I just wanted him to feel comfortable with what we were trying to do, what the process is, if he signed with us that day, and moving forward, what we try to take his career, and kind of explaining to him, hey, it's a, a marathon, not a sprint. I'm coming into your life when you're 19 years old, and hopefully I'll be around when you're 50 years old. And all you need to do is basically get up, listen to your coaches, and work hard. If you do that, I'm going to work twice as hard off the court and do everything we can to make sure you fulfill your dream. I think we felt comfortable with our presentation and, you know, obviously IMG, we've had a good working relationship with them. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, he chooses to let us represent him and uh, work with him with his career, but I think he's got a uh, big shot for success. I've seen how excited you've been the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think everybody, you know, feels comfortable. You need to think about it between now and dinner, mm -hmm. and then just if you feel comfortable at dinner, you know, ask him maybe, hey, I would like you to be my agent. Mm -hmm. What do we have to do moving forward? You think you're ready to make that decision? Or? Yeah, I'm ready for this decision. Good, thank you. I know it's going to be my class last. I'm sweaty. More sweaty than you were last night? <laughs> no. Did you tell Cam why? Did you look at I go prom for last night? Oh. <laughs> That's you on uh, Instagram. So you want to sign? Yep. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, the first line, this is a standard contract. Everybody in the NBA has mm -hmm. LeBron James, mm -hmm. anybody you see, this is the okay. first thing that they sign, okay? Okay. Standard player agent contract. Thank you. All right, big fella. Welcome to the family, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, big fella. It's not a no-brainer, right? No, nah, definitely it's not a no-brainer, man. I think... Sottenham averaged eight points a game this past season in high school. I think all the stars have to line up the right way for it to work. But with the right team, I thought we could pull it off. Chicago pre-draft combine, which takes place a month before the draft, Sottenham wasn't even invited to it. No one really knew who he was. So, you know, we just talked about, hey, let's do like Jerry Maguire did, walking the guy Rod Tidwell around downstairs, just shaking people's hand. We want to make sure we put him in the best possible light because we only got one shot at this thing. See all these people kind of staring, looking at you, trying to figure out who you are. <laughs> You're not at IMG anymore. Everybody doesn't know you around here. But they're trying to figure out who is this big tall kid. They'll know real soon, though, right? Right now, are you ready to go up against DeAndre Jordan and Dwight Howard? No. Most people aren't. None of these guys at the combine are either. And all you have to do is use the same effort that you've used at IMG. Everything they've taught you at IMG yeah. the past five years, yeah. it's prepared you for this moment. I just wanted him to understand like, hey, you're not there yet. You know, we got a long way to go. Really, a lot of these people don't even know you. So, you know, he's just got to trust the process. Meet these guys, you know, give them that good firm handshake, look them in the eye, let them get to know you, but always trying to curb expectation. <laughs> Every year, one of our things we do, we try to get them a custom suit. I just want to show you some options so that way you have, at least have a taste for different things. Image is one of the keys to success. You know, it gets you in the door. 
Now, what you do once you walk through that door is up to you, but that will get you in the door. See, we already know your taste from the get-go, like up in this family, right? I think you kind of like that the best, huh? When we do our guys, we want them to walk across the stage, and we want Coca-Cola, we want Gatorade, we want Nike to say, I want that guy just because he looks great. It's hard to find a suit for a guy seven foot two, 300 pounds, you know? What I mean here, he said, we make sure when you meet 21, when you shake hand, shake hand really hard one. Don't make short one. Because I'll show to everyone, yes, I'm the powerful man. I'm excited for this time. I'm excited. The Bulls, that's great. <laughs> Chicago Bulls. <laughs> Satnam Singh, he's 7 2, about 280. He's got really, really, really good footwork, great touch. This is Satnam. Nice Satnam Singh. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, you got a nice firm handshake. Hi. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. His hands are the, the, <laughs> biggest, <laughs> the biggest in the entire day. Are they really? 11 and, half, 11 and a half inches. Do you remember, uh, now I got small hands. Look at that put, thing. put that one on. No, no, put it up. Put it up. Look at that thing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take the Utah brand uh, global? Well, we're proper. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll see you now. So let's probably spend 10, 15 minutes with him, ask him uh, generic stuff about his background, about his basketball uh, history. When they ask you, Sonam, how long have you been playing basketball? Even though you started in 2005, yeah. you really got serious with it when you got to IMG. When you got to IMG. 2010, that's when you got serious about basketball. He's only really been playing basketball five years. No disrespect to the Indian coaches because they do a good job, but it's just not the same as American basketball. It's not as intriguing to an NBA guy to hear this kid's been playing 10 years and he's not even on the radar, you know? But if he's only been playing five years and he's 19 years old, oh, they'll have a more, you know, they're more likely to listen to you, you know? It's all potential with the NBA. Sodom, this is Steve. How are you doing, Neil? Did you just start um, weight training when you got to IMG? Yeah, when I came here, my coach said, you don't have muscles on your body, you have nothing. You have to need first muscle on your lower body and upper body. You're trying to sell yourself and try to explain who you are as a player because the NBA guys, I mean, that's, this is what they do for a living, you know, and they sit in front of hundreds of guys every year. He plays much better with, with older, bigger players, bigger well, guys. Well, he's afraid well, he's going to hurt people. Yeah, he like, said, uh, what you send like 10 guys to the hospital? Because <laughs> yeah, no, he turns around not and vote, no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah, he just turns around with an elbow and you got to call the paramedics because right. he's that strong, so. Yeah. You know, Here's a 19-year-old kid, seven foot two, 300 pounds, 6% body fat, can shoot the basketball, probably the strongest kid in this draft, you know, so that's potential. Right? <laughs> you know, you really want him to just put his best foot forward and for that time, whether it's five minutes or whether it's 30 minutes, trying to get them to have a good feel for who he is as a person and who he is uh, as a player. You know, you can tell them all you want, but as soon as they put him on the court, they're going to have their own opinion of him as a player. goes in and it's half court, he's gonna look fine. Because he's strong, he can move well enough in the half court set, he's gonna shoot the ball well. We just wanna put him in a position where people would say, uh, you know, hey, he's got a lot of potential at that spot. It's big news for you to be here as well. <laughs> Good luck. Yes, good. All right, you have a good workout. Here we go. 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 Here we go
Nice shot, Satman. Come on. When we invited Satman to come work out, we invited him because he was seven foot three. His hands were, were you know, bigger than like this, right? A lot of times you get guys that big that, you know, hadn't played basketball their entire life and they either can't run well or they're not real coordinated or they don't have any feel for the game. Satnam didn't have any of those problems. His only, you know, negative factor was being so big, he hadn't fully evolved into his body yet. You know, he was coordinated and everything, but the game was still too fast for him. on the nose. 7.4, okay. 7.1, 3 quarters. He's a big young man and with good body composition and you can't teach size. A couple of the numbers that jumped out, he's, he was pretty quick off the ground, which is really important for a big guy to be reactive to get rebounds and things like that. Beautiful, on the move, on the move. Good, on the move. Very nice. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Next part we call this the dunker. So the first thing we do is when Kobe drives, coach is going to step up. Once he steps, you come in, he's going to throw the lob to you, you finish. Very nice. He's 19, you know, it's uh, a lot of room to improve. Basketball is not, you know, his childhood game, so he has to work on his game more about, you know, footwork, but his touch and uh, feeling for the game is pretty good. I was impressed with what I saw out there. He's only played the game for a few years, but uh, he has the uh, maturity and the skills of somebody uh, who's played all his life. Uh, but I was also impressed with uh, Satnam, uh, the human being. Uh, he had a, a very humble and kind uh, demeanor. Satnam, the player, Satnam, the athlete, Satnam, the human being, I'm very impressed with. A couple teams didn't like him. Um, a couple teams thought that uh, there was too much work, too much development. How is that foot speed going to be? Is he going to be able to move and change directions? Is he going to be able to run up and down the floor with DeAndre Jordan, with DeMarcus Cousins, with LaMarcus Aldridge? You know, that was the question that all of them had. There was no clear-cut team saying, hey, this is a no-brainer. We love him. We're going to draft him. draft boards and we try to project where players might come in a draft and I think with Satnam I mean we we knew the potential for him to get drafted I think to be honest I wasn't sure whether or not he would go hi what's up everyone this is Abe from slam I'm at the 2015 slam footlocker draft suite I'm sitting next to Satnam Singh. Welcome to New York City, man. How's your week going so far? It's good. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard weekend for the last couple of days, but uh, it's fine. We had two or three guys on the line that potentially said, hey, you know, he's on our board. You know, if he's there, we might take him. So, you know, at that point, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So downplayed it with him and told him, hey, you might, you might not. So uh, we're going to put this suit on. We got you, and we're going to go, you know, hope for the best. Even if you don't get drafted, you still make history because nobody has gotten this close to where you are. Yeah. Now you know how many picks there are, right? 30 in the first round. 30 in the first round. 30 in the second round, OK? You know, there's a couple that really like you but there's also a lot of factors that we can't determine. Trades, people trading their picks, 
people moving up and moving down in the draft. We knew there were two or three other teams that told me if he didn't get drafted that he'd have a spot on their summer league team. So I was just trying to make sure that he knew, hey, look, the world's not over if you don't, don't get your name called. San Antonio, no, Washington was the first one. Did you tell Vladi and them that Utah was going to, that was willing to do future consideration? What do you say? <clears throat> Man. A lot going on right now, Sotnam. Trying to figure it out, man. Trying to figure it out. A lot of trades. The team is out. It's really going to do something. They're changing up their mind now. It's just a lot going on. Thank you. Are you excited, man? Oh, yes. I, I got to ask, man, what size is your shoe? This is 20. 20? <laughs> yes, sir. How hard of a time do you have finding shoes? It's really hard. Yeah. Clothes make the man, right? The clothes yeah. make the man. And then when they finish a painting, they'll always put their initial right there. What was the hope leading up to the draft for basketball in India? Well, we were all hoping you'd get drafted, of course. It would be, it would be historic. India has never had a player drafted to the NBA. For an Indian-born person, someone who was a national, someone who's played for our national team, you know, who's been through the same things we have, or not the same thing, but who can relate to those things that we have gone through. For someone like that to make the NBA was always going to be huge. And um, so th that was the hope that hopefully he becomes the first guy. Hopefully he can be that role model that Indian basketball solely desires. So he can be the poster child for, for Indian basketball. Nothing is granted in life. Everything is not in your hand. Suntir Apu, that is the only thing you can do. That is the only duty of the human being. If a Satna make to the NBA, it will be the history for our country. In basketball, we have no one to be recognized as the icon. And I hope Satnam will be the person to attain the fortune of Indian basketball. Satnam is the face of that opportunity. And now he feels that everyone is counting on me and he's putting that pressure on himself. So I want to go there. Dad said, okay, you will go there. And the amount of work you can do, and I said, Dad, I will do your work. And I will do all of my own. So today, I feel like that day is very close. If that day is closed, then Dad will come to the next day. He will be happy. And I will be very proud of him. Dad, what are you doing? 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 There's no question that all of the eyes of India are on him. And there's no doubt that people understand the significance of the first Indian-born player being drafted in the NBA. But I think the question is, does he have game? And you know, and I think that's what everybody's going to be watching for now. I feel good. You look I'm good. excited. You look good. There's a couple of more. <laughs> I think he looked back home every day and said, I want to make my family proud, my coaches proud, you know, my country proud, you know, and I want to be that person. You know, I want to be that person. And he he readily took that upon himself. I would have to think that he relied a little bit on that inner strength that he had built up. But I can't imagine the pressure that he felt. Talk 
to your parents? Yeah, I talked uh, last uh, 10 or 12 minutes. Everyone happy back home. The difference between Sodom and most kids, he had a whole country weighing on him. It's never just, uh, I've got to do this for me and my family. It's me, my family, my country. Yeah, maybe open the door. He played the first time in an NBA. But already you opened the door, already. Yeah. You know? Already uh, you the open the lock, not <laughs> door. Just yeah, open the lock. <laughs> open the lock, yeah, yeah. not hard door. came out to the arena a little early. So we took him, we showed him where he was gonna sit. And I could sense he was getting a little nervous, you know? And so I said, look, Satnam, uh, the draft's not gonna start for another hour. So I said, why don't you come back in the basketball operations office? And I just said, just sit and relax with your friends. Like, enjoy this moment, enjoy this day. I think he is someone who represents the hope of a whole nation. This is a country that has a billion people that love sport, but they don't love basketball because they don't know basketball. It literally will change how a whole nation thinks about the sport. For those young men who are there on draft night, they've been fixated on that one moment. For many of them, there will be no bigger moment in their lives than that precise moment on stage, hearing their names called and walking up and shaking the commissioner's hand. Good evening, and welcome to the 2015 NBA Draft at the Barclays Center. First round, you know, obviously one through 14 are lottery picks. Um, so those are, you know, the top 14 players, those are, uh, the elite, the cream of the crop. With the first pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Carl Anthony Towns. With the sixth pick, the Sacramento Kings select Willie Cauley-Stein. We thought that Sacramento, with their owner being Indian, we thought that that might be, at worst, a landing spot. And even with them, they were like, I don't think they were going to buy a pick because he was in the second round. They didn't have a second round pick. With the 14th pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Cameron Payne from Murray State University. My other client got picked 14 by OKC. I knew I had a little time after that. We were talking the same three or four teams. The Chicago Bulls select Bobby Portis. The Portland Trailblazers select Rondé Hollis Jefferson. You know, that whole process just was getting draining, to be honest with you, because you feel hopeless at times. Got a couple of teams close uh, here at the end. You know, just keep the faith. The only two that we had left were Washington at 49 and Dallas at 52. So I'm hitting the guys up from Washington, and they're not hitting back. With the 49th pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Washington Wizards select Aaron White from the University of Iowa. You know, it's coming to the end. The building's emptying out. This is the last team that I know on this list. This is really it. With the 52nd pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Satnam Singh from <laughs> yeah, big Sandal. Yeah, big fella. Travis, what did we just say? History. History. I mean, we saw a kid that had a dream and, you know, worked his tail off and a team that believed in him and supported him and, you know, grace of God, man, it worked, you know. So, it's unbelievable. Hold on, Donnie. Hold on, Donnie. Donnie Nelson, that's the general manager. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, 
uh, how you, thank you so much, sir. We didn't decide to draft Satin until about two seconds before we had to turn it into the NBA. And that's not unusual when you have a pick in the 50s. You know, we went through all the different alternatives and given the choices, we thought, okay, Satinam's our guy. Everyone in the Indian basketball family was celebrating this and we lived vicariously through his dream. Like he made all our dreams come true that day. I was so happy for him. I mean, he's just such a great human being. People don't understand. He's, he's seven foot one, but he's a better human being than he is big. Seeing Satnam get drafted was very emotional for me, very touching, very historical for India. It's historical for the NBA. Sorry, I, um, I get emotional because it's pretty cool, you know? It's pretty cool. He, uh, sorry. I think people may look back on that date and say, that was the tipping point of basketball in India. The people in India are thinking that this is the face of India basketball. There will be professional basketball there in India, and Satnam is the face of that. Yao Ming helped make basketball a passion in, in China, and I see uh, uh, Satnam doing the same for India. If Satnam is 180th as successful as Yao, the country of India has embraced him to the point where when he speaks, the kids are going to listen. He's going to have influence on the future, not just be a part of the future. In four or five years, if he continues to progress as he has, he could be the face of basketball in India easily. I would expect that to happen. Um, he's got that much upside. He's living proof that somebody can come from anywhere and they can make it. And we're all excited to see his continued success because we know he's going to continue to do great things. I say, Dad, I'm promised I go work hard. One day I get a big house. You did a really, really good job for me, whole life. I think I, I don't need anything anymore. But now it's my job to do something for you, for my sister, for my brother, for my mom. I go work hard one day. My dad has said, yes, my, my son did a good job for me.